The pleasure of giving a handmade journal is only matched by the joy when you make it. In this week's video I'm making an easy junk journal for a special friend, taking design ideas from past projects and taking you through it step by step so that you can do it too. I begin by pulling a bunch of glorious papers from my stash and I just need a few other tools today, a paper trimmer, a pair of scissors, some thread for binding and a sturdy needle, a ruler and a pencil. And if you have a passion for papers like this and you just love making journals then hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell, I have lots more videos and ideas to come. The papers that are pulled today are ones that I think match her personality, so maybe these jazzy spots. I also like the name of it, Dude Collection, but I've also tried to pull ones that match the things that she does, her hobbies, what she spends her time doing when she has some minutes that are free. And so this page, beautiful as it is, is really meant to reflect the writing that she does. And I know that she's writing a book and I felt that that went with that. This Robin has such character, such a curmudgeonly face, and I think the page might fit if I'm able to cut it down. Now this page is all about travel and these images really shouted out at me. So I think this could be maybe something that sits at the front of the journal. The images on this one might be better for decorating and I'm going to do that in the next video. But I really like the characters, there's something very strong about this page and that also seems to fit her personality. I've pulled a page from a children's book and although it's rather large I think I'll be able to fold that down so that looks really good. One of her hobbies is tennis and lovely picture there that I'll be using. I want to create a journal that really inspires her to capture her thoughts and some memories and make some personal notes and so these pages are really just a collection of items to encourage that to happen and also some blank pages or lined pages to give her space to write. Here's a page with some text which is always really helpful so some useful words here that I might use I'm not sure at this stage laughter is always a good one we have a lot of fun together Here's a page from an atlas and some very pretty vellum. Some cardstock there with nice font. Ah, some black and white with a tube map again to reflect the travel. Another page from that children's book. And some smaller pages here with some interesting words which I felt again were reflecting her personality. This part of the process is always a lot of fun as well I think so I know I tend to pull far too many pages in the first instance but I find it easier to pull out too many and then refine the pile, whittle it down, really take it down to something that you know will be wonderful when they're folded and bound in a journal and that's what we're going to do now. I'm choosing a sturdy piece of cardstock for the cover, maybe something larger like this, something big enough to write in and make notes. So that's one idea from a past project. I'm also considering this smaller one, which is very handy and portable, but maybe not as useful for making notes. This is part of a dog food box. It's lovely colour, but very, very thick. I like using the outside of old magazines and this one's a great size, would be great for folding over. Here's one that is a little bit thicker and a plain one. I wondered whether that would be a good one so that I could decorate it. This one has cheeky owl faces which are pretty but maybe not as specific to the individual. So I might use this one and then decorate it. That would be fun. It looks about the right size. I think I'll have it this way with the building on the front and I'm going to add two signatures. So I'll be adding a spine like this one and then measuring it and folding it over. So let's get on with that. I'm planning to have about 10 sheets of paper in each of the two signatures. So I'm adding a spine of about seven millimeters. So I'm just measuring that out with my ruler and pencil. And I'm using my trimmer or the indentation in the trimmer to get a little bit of a score along those spine lines. So I'm just taking my needle. It's the 
blunter end of the needle and slowly running it down the groove of the trimmer working on the first one and then on the second and I keep the needle quite upright so that I get quite parallel lines for that spine so that's just a little tip to help your journal cover be neat when it's folded over. And this gives me a journal cover today of about 14 and a half centimetres by 21 and that's five and three quarter inches by about eight and a quarter. And now we can choose the final pages that are going to go in it. And I just thought I'd show you the choices that are made and really talk about why I made them. So I have condensed that rather larger pile into maybe about 20 sheets. And what I wanted to do was really get the essence of the person that I know. I want to choose papers that make her smile, make her feel that this is really personal to her and also allow her to have space to write and to gather those thoughts. So you can see pages here about music, writing and travel and hopefully a consistent palette of green and red. And now it's time to choose the centre page, which is always really important in a journal. So let's pick one from this collection, something that we really think works in the journal. I've chosen a page from a Rupert Bear annual, partly because it's my era, but also it's visually very colourful and an awful lot of fun. And I'm just taking a look at where the images would go, given the size of the cover. I'm going to do a little bit of smart folding in the centre, Here's one I've done before. And what this allows me to do is keep all of those lovely images, despite the fact that the journal doesn't really look big enough. So I'm just using the cover to make some pencil marks at the bottom here where I want to fold. And I just fold that up at the bottom. And a tip here is to make your fold as neat and tidy as you can. And maybe even use a bone folder to make that edge really crisp and neat. And this will help when we sew it into the journal, it's going to be a middle spread of one of the signatures and we want it to pull down very neatly when we open up the journal. So I'm just adding a little concertina fold there as well. And again, using the bone folder to make that line super crisp and neat. I hope you can see that not only is this process really easy and a lot of fun, but you can make something that is incredibly personal and special for a friend and that's really what I wanted to show here in this video today by pulling papers that tell the story that reflect your friend's hobbies, interest and personality you can make something that's just so unique and so special something that you could never buy and I just wonder if this is something that you could make as a gift for Christmas for a birthday perhaps let me know what you think leave a comment down below and I'm just working through each of the lovely papers that we've chosen and I'm trimming them down to a size that works they don't all need to be the same size and they don't all need to be the same width I quite like variety when I look at each piece I think maybe it would work as a pocket maybe it would work with some kind of fold out I'm really just looking to use each page in the very best way to get lots of nooks and crannies where we can tuck in little journaling cards and tags that we can make, but also making plenty of space to put lists and to write notes and for those special thoughts. And where I can, such as with this spotty cardstock, which I think is absolutely beautiful. I love those shades. They're quite autumnal. I'm taking off cuts and I'll keep those. So in this particular case, I'll use that as a belly band when we come to decorate in the next video. So here I'm just folding it over and I definitely need my bone folder given that it's cardstock and I'm just trimming off the bottom there. I have a piece of ledger paper. For some reason, I just like this kind of paper to mix in amongst the other pages. It creates a lovely sense of contrast and there's something about ledger paper be it vintage ledger paper or modern that just really works what do you think i always think monochrome is very useful so if i do see a monochrome book in a charity shop i tend to pick that up and here i've just chosen a page from one of those books and i'll mix that in in one of the signatures 
I have a piece of music paper here and I'm just being rather careful about where I want to fold it because I don't want to divide up the bars. I want a really good visual impact so I have made a fold just between those bars of music and folding back as well so that will fit in quite nicely. A beautiful sheet of crinkly music paper, I really like that one. What nonsense, the words on some of these pages are really what fitted with this journal. So it isn't always the picture that shouts out, it can be the text, it can be the font style. What I've done in the design of this journal and in choosing the papers is really just think about the top three hobbies, features, personality types of my friend that I want to pull out in the paper. So those three today were writing, tennis and travel and here we have a piece of matte paper that is just representing the travel of the world that she loves to do. It's a little bit too big, I think I have a little bit too much border on this one. I'm just testing against the size of the cover so I think I'm going to trim it down and to do that I will just take a little bit off the bottom and off the top rather than trimming a bigger proportion from just the top or the bottom and that way I retain more of the map image. I'm including lined paper in the signatures today, in fact I want to add more space for writing in the second signature than in the first. The idea is that the first signature will be interesting, stimulating, amusing and have a slightly larger proportion of the relevant images and pages in. Second signature will still have a few but will have a little bit more writing space. So I'm adding lined papers and some plain paper and here you can see me just making it a bit more interesting by folding it back, making some concertina folds there. I really like this image of Chris Evert and if it's not giving too much away, she was very much in the front line when I was growing up and I was watching tennis on telly. The challenge is that I don't want to fold it sideways so I need to find a way of folding this so that I protect as much of the image as possible and I want that to be upright. So I'm folding down one side and I'm going to make a little pocket out of this, keeping the image intact. So I'm folding up at the back. I think that's Vetus gerulitis. If you know, let me know in a comment down below. Again, it's good to make these folds neat and crisp, but this gives me enough of the image preserved that I'm happy with that in my signature. And here's that beautiful double page from a children's book and again I'm using the cover of the journal to think through how to make the best of the images, which part of the page do I want to protect and preserve, do I cut it down or do I fold it and in this case I think I'm going to take some off the bottom so I'm folding that with my bone folder and just tearing it off but it is a double page and I think I want to fold again using some kind of concertina fold out so that the images are still retained and also I'll have something tactile and interesting. So imagine when you're turning the pages on a signature, there are lots of things that you want to pull out and look at and when you pull it out you get lovely images. So I'm folding a number of times and here you can see how that will show itself when you pull it out. And I really like the font of that Thumbelina word. So again, I'm keeping some of that in the back page. So keeping it intact as much as possible and using as much of the paper as possible. One of the lessons I've learned from making journals is when to accept that a page doesn't fit or you can't fit it in. And I'm just gonna to have to let that lovely little chap, that Robin go. But I do have this monochrome tennis page, so from another tennis book. And again, I'm going to protect that image and fold up, and I'm folding it up at a point where I get just a little bit of text underneath the image. I've not completely hidden all of that. So that's the reason why I've folded where I have. And I'll be gluing that to make a pocket in a couple of minutes. So I just set that aside. This amazing piece of 12 by 12 is going to be 
the front of the first signature so really quite impactful when you open up the cover so I'm marking with a pencil where I want that cut or tear to go I'm folding it and then I think it's okay to tear this one if I'm neat with the edge I think that's absolutely fine and then I'm thinking where to fold using the images to make a balanced front cover and by that I mean a nice distribution of those little images so that it's really pleasing when you open up the journal. I'm also going to create another belly band from a little bit of spare that I have on the back so I'm trimming that off and that will feature again in the decorating that we do after this video. And here we have the contents of our two signature journal. We've got a degree of consistency in colour palette, but definitely variety in the way in which those individual pages will fold out. And I am happy as well with the different heights and widths. So really easy and lots of fun. And I hope that you might be making one of these personal easy junk journals for one of your special friends too. It's time to glue the pockets and I'm using this little bottle of wood adhesive glue today. I thought I'd show you a couple of examples. So in the first example, I'm putting a tiny bit of glue just down the sides here, folding up and pressing down and that will make a little pocket page. And this one is just the same again, just use a tiny bit of glue. You really don't need very much down either side ever so easy. This second example is a pocket from the side so I'm putting a little bit of glue at the top and the bottom. I think this is the style of pocket that Nazi did on one of her recent videos on the Amity Bloom YouTube channel here. I'll leave a link to her channel in the description box down below. She does some absolutely beautiful journals and I just thought I would mention that and share the loveliness. And now that we have all of the pages ready, all of the cutting and folding done, it's time to put them into two little piles. So I'm just making up two piles for each of the signatures, maybe adding a little bit more of the papers that have writing space, the lined paper, the ledger paper in that second right hand pile. I already know the centre page and the front page of each signature, so that makes life a little bit easier. I make a few final adjustments between the piles and I'm just counting them out to check that I have the right number in each one. And the next step is to put them in an order in each signature that really works for you. And there isn't really a right and wrong in the way in which you might do this. What I look to do is make sure that I get the most impact from every page and that means looking for contrast between the pages. So I wouldn't put two pieces of writing paper next to each other, for example. I might scatter the graph paper between text and plain, as you can see here. And I'll also think about distributing pages with different sizes, again, for more interest when you turn every page. I had a lot of fun making a journal recently with a, a lovely little squirrel in the centre spread. So I'll link that video in the description box down below. You might like to take a look. It was a lot of fun and really easy again. And this is the first signature done. I just need to trim a little bit off. I turn the pages to check I'm happy with the order of each of them. And it's perfectly fine. Make any adjustments that you feel are right just pulling this little vintage paper further to the front. I think it goes really nicely with that graph paper. And as you can see, I've spread out some of the colors, spread out a dictionary page, and we have our little concertina folded center spread of Rupert Bear. I do exactly the same with the second pile of papers. And now we have two signatures ready to sew in. I'm making six little holes today along this spine and I'll do it with the needle. So I start by finding the center of our cover and I'm making a little mark with a pencil and the marks will be parallel to each other just inside the fold of the spine. So find the middle with your pencil, put one mark just next to one of the folds and another mark just next to the other fold and punch through with your needle. 
and for the dimensions of this journal I'm taking a mark about six centimeters either side of that middle hole and I'm doing exactly the same I'm just making two little holes so that we can have a strong and firmly held signature but really reducing the work so it's a really simple binding method that we're doing here today. I wanted to use embroidery thread today but I've reorganised my craft room and I just can't find it. Does that happen to you? Have you ever reorganised your room or tidied things up and then that's the time you can't find anything? Great excuse for not being tidy I think. What do you think? I have a couple of pegs there to help the pages stay in position so I'm just adjusting their alignment so that they'll be exactly where I want them to be. I use a ruler to make them really bunch together, hold together tightly and that will help the journal be very neat when we sew it up. The pegs go on to help me and now I'm going to mark exactly where I want the holes in the signature to go and I'm using the cover where we made the previous holes to help me get those little holes in the pages in exactly the right place. I found this to be my best method yet to reduce the risk of error in where the holes go. Remembering that as we have that fold out at the bottom of the page we need to make the pencil mark underneath the fold out because that will just sit on top. So while the pages are in position I'm just going to use my needle to make a hole pressing that through and there have been suggestions kindly made by some of you about how to make holes through your signatures. One way is to position your signature on an open book of some form so that you've got something to press down to that still holds it in place. I think that's a really great idea. Maybe I'll use that on my next journal. It's really great when you do make suggestions in the comments and I think many of us read them so keep those coming, keep the comments in the suggestion boxes down below measured out my thread it's about three and a half times the height of the journal and that will give us enough to make the tie off at the side when we're finished really easy and not too fiddly. I'm going to tie it off on the outside of the journal today you could tie it off in the middle but for me it would make it a little bit fatter perhaps a little bit harder to close so I'm beginning by threading the string through from the outside in and I'm going to use a really simple figure of eight to bind this. So coming through from the outside of the signature through the top hole and down through that middle one and out through the back and in again through the bottom hole and up again into the center. So it's very simple just take your time getting that needle through you may need to feed each of the individual pages onto the needle. Sometimes that's the easiest way of getting it on and getting the string and the thread through. I have about 10 sheets in each of the signatures, so it's not too difficult and it won't take too long. So just pulling the thread through and I've already made one error. As you can see at the top there, the string has actually come through the cover which is what I always recommend you don't do I always recommend you leave enough string dangling outside that cover but never mind it's easy to carry on so I just keep going threading the pages onto the needle and I can fix that at the end really easily I've taken off the pegs to make the sewing a little bit easier at this point and I'm just finishing off by getting the needle through that final centre hole pulling it through the back and that will mean I'm in a position to be able to tie it off. So I'm just taking the end through the top hole in the cover. Very quick and easy. And I tie a knot, I tie a double knot to make it really firm and then I tie a bow. And I guess at this point you could think about adding some kind of dangles or extra decoration to the outside and maybe that's something that we could think about doing. Do you like adding extra things to your journal at this stage to the outside ties? Let me know in a comment down below. And now I'm taking the second signature and doing exactly the same. Bring it together tightly, add the pegs, mark the holes, 
punch it through with the needle sew it in starting with the top outer hole and threading through to the front and following through with your figure of eight binding it neatly against the signature that's already in there I just take a moment to tie it off at the top and this gives me my easy junk journal for somebody really special I'll be decorating it next week so hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss it and come back again so that you can enjoy our paper passion together and our art and junk journaling <laughs>